Okay, we're back on Instagram. Okay. I promise we haven't done anything since we stopped. Drinking. <laughs> Except drink some wine. Why is that the thing on the speaker talking? Okay. Yeah, I think we need to turn that I think we need to turn that speaker off. So we had a little technical difficulty there. Uh, apparently it's a little too warm for the technology. Some of those cell phones weren't liking the excessive heat. Uh, for those of us, Jeff and myself, a little white wine. And uh, can't complain, it's a spring day. It's beautiful to we'll have you guys back with us. What did we leave off, Jeff? All right, so we had our uh, bread was toasted. Um, while we were away, our steak is um, nice and seared now. We're going to let that rest for the hash. So we go anyways. Um, so with the toast, we have our mashed avocado. We are just going to put some of that right on the toast. I like lots of avocado. I agree with that. And then we have some um, smoked wild salmon, wild king salmon. Uh, that we're just going to kind of layer on the toast, or on top of the avocado. I know at the winery I've seen you do this with some uh, beautiful rainbow beets, uh, right? Exam beets, yeah. Other really you nice. You can do additions. all sorts of stuff with toast. You can do, you know, grill your bread and put ricotta cheese on it, and do roasted mushrooms or sauteed mushrooms. Uh, that's one of the nice things. It's kind of uh, open for discussion. Absolutely, you can do whatever you like. So. Um, yeah. So then we are going to top that uh, with a few radishes. So these are radishes from my gardens here. And then we have a little bit of um, baby arugula that we're going to put on there as well. So put that on top. Great. Um, I like a little bit of black pepper on there. And then we are going to give this a cut. Put that up on our plate. Put our goodies back on there. And then um, this, we're gonna put a little bit of our Meyer lemon oil on to finish. Awesome, love that lemon with all my vegetables at home. We uh, are still having a little bit of technical difficulties, everybody. So uh, if you're tuning in and having a little trouble hearing us, maybe we will uh, be putting all of this back again on our social media websites, a little replay video. Uh, we'll make sure to upload one that uh, you guys can clearly hear us. And then uh, again, please feel free to ask some questions. You can always direct some questions to me, Josh at Round Pond, and I'd be happy to uh, follow up after this and um, wrap you guys up with anything. You know, Chef has got a lot of things going on preparing for Mother's Day brunch, but we can also direct some questions to uh, to either Chef Jamie or our sous chef Cameron as well for you guys. We've got two questions. What kind of bread do you recommend using, and can you do it without radishes? You can do it without <laughs> radishes, absolutely. Um, I will get to the bread question in a second. I'm going to put some pickled onions on here as well because I go. forgot them. And then just kind of a nice little treat to it maybe. You don't have to do it. Uh, but it's some salmon caviar you can kind of put on there. Kind of a nice little added bonus. Um, so bread. Uh, this is a um, whole wheat sourdough. So it's a Levon bread. Um, Levon, Levon bread is basically a sourdough. So leavening, Levon, same thing. Um, Levon breads and sourdough breads that have a, a mother or a, you know, a starter to it are all kind of about the same thing. So, yep. um, this is Acme Bakery uh, here in the Bay Area, awesome bakery. Uh, which is one of my favorite breads. Uh, this is actually my favorite bread that they make, so um, that's what I prefer to serve it on. But you could serve it on whatever you like. I mean, yeah. if you really wanted to serve it on sliced white bread, you could serve it on sliced white <laughs> bread. But um, I recommend a nice kind of artisan uh, loaf of bread, so. If you're making, I'm not complaining, but uh, <laughs> sourdough is always good in my boat too, growing up out here in California. All right, last dish we're gonna do, so we're gonna do a potato and uh, steak hash with an herb chimichurri. 
Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our uh, vegetables um, going for our hash. So just a little bit of canola oil in our pan. We have uh, some diced onions and uh, some yellow bell pepper, red bell pepper, uh, and we're just gonna kind of cook that together. You just kind of want those onions to become a little bit translucent and cook down a little bit, soften up. Um, we can add a little bit more oil to help that. While that's cooking, our steak is resting. Uh, we're gonna make our herb chimichurri. You can do this a couple different ways. I'm just gonna kind of chop everything up and do it that way. You could also put all these ingredients into a blender uh, and puree it that way. It'll be a much smoother, kind of creamier chimichurri, I guess, but uh, it's definitely another option that you have. It's called a nice rustic chop, right? If you yeah. do it yourself. So we have um, a couple cups of chopped parsley and then about a half a cup of tarragon here, or whole parsley. And so about four parts parsley to one part tarragon. And we're just gonna, uh, we'll keep this, we're just gonna give this a rough chop. And with Cabernet, I'm sure you guys can imagine, but we're gonna highlight, or with steak, we're gonna highlight some of our Cabernet, I'm sure you guys can imagine. Uh, we've had some wonderful first time viewers with us since we wanna highlight a Cabernet that you guys can find at home. Uh, so Chef and I will be enjoying a little bit of our Rutherford Cab. Uh, this is something that, uh, one of the few actually that we distribute. Uh, so if you jump on our website, you can find it there, but we'll also show you guys how easy it is to uh, find in your marketplace as well. So our onions and peppers are cooking. We're gonna add our potatoes. These are fingerling potatoes that I blanched for about 10 minutes. Uh, so they were soft enough to cut through with a knife, um, but not overcooked and, and um, kind of soggy and mushy. So we're just gonna throw those in there. That's a professional cook, right? Do a little yeah. pre-cook first hand, let them get a right. little color. Put those cooking in there. We'll turn up our heat now on that. We're gonna season that a little bit so we can start to develop flavors. So season in layers, salt and pepper. Um, we are gonna chop these just a little bit more. I kind of like the rough, kind of rustic look to it. So it's not super smooth. Then I imagine people can be creative. They can try some of their own herbs or maybe Absolutely. an extra touch of garlic in there. Cilantro like. makes, I mean, traditional chimichurri would be cilantro. Yep. Um, but we're just doing something from our garden. Awesome. Um, so chopped herbs. We have a little bit of garlic as well. It's kind of just sliced. So this is like two cloves of garlic. Looks like a, a lesson from Goodfellas there, the way you slice yeah, that right. garlic nice and thin. <laughs> And then, um, so after that, we're gonna add a little bit of our Cab Merlot vinegar. So for acidity, so we want a few tablespoons of vinegar. And then we're gonna finish this with our Italian olive oil. Uh, and we wanna add just enough oil so that it kinda becomes loose and oily and not just a pile of dense herbs. Uh, so you're probably gonna put a half a cup or so in there. And at home, would this be something you season to taste? Uh, so if Absolutely. You put too so, much vinegar there, you just add yep, a little more oil back. Whatever you want to do. Perfect. And then we'll season with some salt. We're just going to mix that all together. What vintage of Rutherford Cab do you have? I think today we're working with a 2016 Rutherford Cab. So a current vintage, uh, which is beautiful, available for everybody. I actually hosted a tasting a few days back and had a little of the 14 Rutherford Cab. Uh, so there are some of those wines in the library. Some of them are a little bit more exclusive to our club members, but uh, reach out to us, give us a call. Juan's helping out on the behind scenes today too. I'm sure many of you have met him and uh, we'd be happy to get you something a little special from the library if you guys will so desire. I know you have some full hands, Chef. You want a, a glass of cab? I will. So our hash is cooking. Um, at the very end, <clears throat> Wow, so everything is hot now. At the very end, you just want to finish your seasoning. Sometimes you get a little caught up in a live moment, right? Mm. Uh, we don't want Chef to fall down here. He's one of the most important people, so we <laughs> need him to stay on his feet because I don't think anybody else here can be able to replicate mm. his skill. But uh, 
when you're back. We got you. Right, we're back. So Perfect. now we're just gonna add some fresh herbs. So a little bit of fresh thyme, a little bit of fresh parsley. Mm. Toss that all together. And then we are going to plate this up right on this plate. So we're going to put our hash down, a little bit of pile, kind of off center, I guess. And I got no objection to this hash, but uh, is your duck confit hash on our website as well, Chef? Do you know? I think so. Okay, something we'll look for. We might have yeah. to add to. Uh, another really exceptional recipe from Chef here. And then we have our New York strip. So we're just gonna make a few slices in that. One strip is probably enough for a couple people. Um, we're just gonna lay that on top of there. Nice beautiful char to the outside there, Chef. And then we're gonna take our herb chimichurri here. I can see it's got a good amount of oil in it, so it's not just a big clump of herbs. We're just gonna put that over the top. Maybe get some of that oil and vinegar that's in there and kind of go around all over the plate. And then that is our steak and potato hash with a garden herb chimichurri. Sign me up for brunch, Chef. I'm uh, yeah. excited. Hopefully we can open soon and we can do this for more people, but uh, that looks amazing. Yeah, we do our brunch every Sunday. Um, starts at 10 o'clock. We do a tour of the gardens. Um, when we have all of our products, we do a oil and vinegar uh, vinaigrette making class where you get to make your own vinaigrette. Um, and then we do a six minute brunch to follow, so. Always a good thing to see on Sunday. You know, uh, again, hopefully we'll be able to see everyone soon, but uh, something to look forward to. Uh, I know I fielded a few emails from some of you guys that may be watching that are trying to book the first Sunday we can get back to uh, normal <laughs> operations. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you guys all again soon. We'll uh, use a moment to turn over to a little Q&A. So if you guys uh, didn't quite get a chance to ask a question or you were a little uh, busy trying to follow along and write down some recipes, uh, again, we'll post all of those on our website. But uh, feel free, entertain us, guys. Flood some questions in and uh, you have Chef here. Give us lots of questions. True professional, uh, quite, quite an amazing guy. Uh, I'm gonna step away real quickly. For those of you guys still tuning in, we're gonna do a little, maybe a little Mother's Day toast, do a little special homage as uh, this will be our last live cooking demonstration before Mother's Day. And we want to uh, do a thank you to all the moms out there too. Questions? Anyone? Please give us some questions. How long have you worked at Round Pond? I have worked at Round Pond for six years, uh, six days ago. So my anniversary was on the 2nd of May. Uh, so it's been six years now. All right, so for those of you familiar, we're going to do a, a little special tasting of our secret garden. Uh, so it's going to be a little homage to our Mother's Day. Um, this is, for anybody that's not familiar, this is a uh, one of our gravel series wines. It comes from our Oakville property. And this is an homage to the matriarchs of the McDonald family. Uh, their home is right here pretty much over our shoulders. They have a beautiful vegetable garden in their home as well. And this is one of Jan's favorite spots. Uh, so a secret garden, again, a, a big thank you, a heartfelt thank you to all the mothers out there. Uh, as you all know, without you, this isn't possible <laughs> with all of us around us here. Uh, so cheers. cheers to the moms. Happy Mother's Day, all you mothers out there. Does that give us a chance for any questions? Anybody got some curiosities? The steak dish would be great with an egg on top as well. If anyone wanted to add an egg, do a fried egg on top or a poached egg on top would be great. Absolutely. Uh, all sorts of different options you could do there. So. And then. Who wants to know how long do you cook the omelet? So about. It depends on your oven. So if you have a convection oven, it's going to take a little less time. So probably six to eight minutes at 350 or so. Um, if you don't have a convection oven, it's going to take a little bit longer, probably right around 10 minutes or so. Um, but you want to cook it just until the eggs set up and they're not liquid anymore. 
Would you suggest a toothpick, like the brownie trick? Uh, toss some toothpick in there, or would that make it break? Um, you could. Okay. It's not thick enough to really okay. test that way. Um, you but me? you can see, if you shake the pan, you'll see any, any liquid egg that's still on there. Um, will show if you just kind of jiggle the pan a little bit. So practice makes perfect. That's it. Okay. It some practice for sure. So it's Friday. You guys got today, tomorrow, That's and right. leading into Sunday to give a practice on that egg Everyone's dish. Everyone's going to get eggs for the next two days <laughs> until Mother's Day, and then it'll be perfect. If you keep serving them with steak, Chef, you can make me eggs any day of the week. <laughs> Nothing else from anybody? All right. We'll get close to wrapping this up. Uh, again, apologies for any of the techno technological challenges we had there. Uh, you know, if it's not live, it's not fun. Uh, so thank you guys. Thank you all again for tuning in. We will post all of our recipes again on our website. Uh, you'll also see a, a replay of these videos uh, on our social media accounts. Uh, so for anybody that lost us part of the way through, I uh, hope you had a chance to get some wine, and we'll see you again next week. Have next night. week, um, we will have a kind of sweet and savory demo. Uh, so you may see some dessert in there for all you people who were asking about dessert. Um, that could be part of it. Uh, and then maybe uh, a savory dish in there as well. So um, we will post a little teaser earlier in the week as to what things are going to be. And then uh, you can join us next Friday at the same time. And we're always open to suggestions as well, too. I think, uh, you know, some of our best ideas have come from the masses. Uh, so please, guys, you're welcome to ask some questions and follow up later. You can always reach back to me, josh at rompon.com. Thank you, guys.